Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Tudor Watches Black Bay 36. First off, though, before I go any further, I want to thank my buddies over at Lewis Jewelers in Ann Arbor, Michigan, for uh, originally loaning this guy my way. Um, they are my AD for Tudor. They could absolutely be yours if you give DK a call. Tell him Nick sent you. Um, he can you know help you find the Tudor of your dreams. Also work with you on other brands like Omega, Breitling, Tag, Seiko, a bunch of other folks. Help you out with some promotional pricing. Nonetheless, they they they're great folks. Um, and they've been really good to me and good to my people, and hopefully they can be good to you too. So thank you very much, Lewis Jewelers, for uh, loaning this guy my way originally. Um, next thing, let's do some size measurement, because the important thing about this guy is that it is actually of a reasonable size. I'll go on ahead and measure it up, and what you're going to see here is the uh, diameter is... Uh 36 millimeters. Black Bay 36. Huh, that's weird, right? The actual face of the watch is actually not too much smaller at about 30 millimeters. So um, th there's that. With the crown involved, we're closer to 39. The lug-to-lug -lug distance, which is the most relevant measure for people who are slight of wrist, is coming in just at 43 millimeters, which means this is going to wear great on a lot of different wrists. And then the thickness on this guy is only about 10 millimeters, which is very, very nice. Um, the size of this guy is absolutely reasonable. And that is shocking in today's market of quesadilla freaking plates sitting on your wrist. That is a, a beautiful thing. There are also three different options. There's the um, Black Bay 32, which is predictably 32 millimeters, the 36, which is this guy here. And there is the 41. And you can also get these guys with other different dial colors as a black dial, as well as silver dial options. So you've got a lot of different choices here with this particular version. And then finally, um, it's worth noting that this review is actually being filmed after about three weeks of this guy being relatively consistently on my wrist. So this has a... Uh this has a fair amount of experience behind it, so to speak, and so I, I went ahead and I refilmed a little bit later on uh, once I spent some more time with the watch. So let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting watch. So to start with on the good side, I gotta say the crown and the stem are quite nice. They're relatively uh, big. If we take a look here, we see that the stem and the crown are actually sticking out a fair amount. They're a little bit proud. And, uh, I've had a number of people say, oh my god, that's so ugly. The thing is, it's kind of a part of the Black Bay design DNA. Like it or not, it is sort of a thing. And on the stem itself, you can see you've got the little Tudor rosette up there. Um, it's just, it's pretty well done. I think it works really well, and the winding is very, very nice on it as well. Next thing on this guy, I do appreciate elements of this clasp here. The clasp, actually, you'll see here, has a set of ceramic bearings that are kind of built into this rear area right here and help everything snap together, and that just gives it a very, very nice feel, right? Um, popping this guy open and closed it just feels markedly better than a lot of your metal-on-metal -metal solutions. Is it the end of the world? No, absolutely. Absolutely not, but it is very nice. You'll also note that the, uh, the the bracelet links here are screw down. This is a little tiny flathead screwdriver hole, and so you just stick a screwdriver in there and start twisting, and this spot here will unscrew and you can take it out. Making replacing links on this so freaking easy, it's absolutely a, a wonderful thing. So I'm a really big fan of that element of the bracelet. It's relatively well done, it's nicely polished and whatnot, and the clasp does feel very, very nice in the hand, even if it's lacking in a couple of other areas here. You can See, it's also nicely engraved on the inside here. Can't argue with that, right? Steel and ox. That means steel and oxidable. That's uh, the, the, the stainless. Anyway, so there you go. Um, Next thing, this guy is the Tudor Caliber 600. I would generally show you the inside of the watch, but it's, uh, well close case back. So instead, you can stare at the pretty part. The, um, this is actually Swiss for Solita SW200, or in some versions, actually, the uh, ETA 2824. Some of the older ones used ETA movements. Thing is, this is an absolutely fine workhorsey style movement, right? It is a hacking movement, which means that if I pull the, uh, the, the, the crown out here, what you're going to see is that the, uh, the crown stops. I'm sorry, the, uh, the the second hand stops, right? Uh, so the watch is able to be set very precisely. There's also a hand-windable movement, meaning I can turn the crown to add a little bit more wind to this, even though it is an automatic watch. It will charge naturally just by being on my wrist and moving around, so that's nice. The power reserve on this guy is 38 hours, which is, I'll be honest, not super impressive in the modern day and age of in-house movements and whatnot, but it is absolutely functional, and it has been running very accurately. Putting this guy in the time grapher, I'm seeing between uh, plus five and minus to, I'm sorry, uh, minus five and plus two seconds per day uh, accuracy. On the wrist, it runs around two seconds a day fast. So, um, yeah, there, there, there is that. So the caliber is is actually quite nice. Uh, the 2 to T600, 
it's just a fancy SW200, but at the same time, it's working quite well. Next thing, this is not an in-house movement. And I, I know what you're thinking. Well, Nick, that's good. Well, the thing is, yes and no. This is an area that some people are going to disagree, certainly. Some people like the exclusivity of an in-house horological experience. But at the same time, this is going to be a lot easier to maintain independently in the long term, right? Uh, you're not going to be dependent on the maker, on Tuda, for parts or service and that kind of thing. And certainly, there are benefits to in-house movements. They can be very nice, and from horology, some people like them. And frankly, this is probably even disagreeing with myself in the past at a certain point, but from a right-to-repair perspective, um, this is 100% the thing. To be able to take this to any competent watchmaker and get it serviced down the road with guaranteed availability of parts, because there are a billion SW200 watches out there, well, that's a beautiful thing. And honestly, at this point, these days, a movement really needs to be exceptional to merit that kind of a lock-in um, for me to feel great about that. And so I actually like that this isn't an in-house movement, um, if, especially at this kind of a price. So um, they, 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 there is that. Next thing, um, we are looking at a water resistance here of 150 meters. They don't actually say it very prominently on the case. Um, I think it is on the back here someplace. No, actually it isn't, but nonetheless, it's 150 meter water resistant. What that basically means is you just don't have to worry about water. Uh, th this is going to be fine in the shower if you, where you're watching a shower, which you probably shouldn't, but it'll be fine in the pool. It's fine in a rainstorm. You just don't have to think about water. And 150 meters gives you, with that screw down crown, by the way, gives you more than enough, you know, uh, basically margin of error um, so that the, when the seals wear a little bit, you're still going to be okay. So that's that's great. The crystal here is sapphire, um, which is what you would expect at this kind of a price point. The finishing on the case is quite nice. We're going to see here is that although it's a little bit dirty because I have been wearing it, this is a very nicely polished sort of case right here. Um, what you see here is it's just a, there's a little bit of brushed area to it. There are little polished edges here and it is actually nicely polished here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on you here. Yeah, so we see very nice polishing on the edges here. We see nice the rosette. The bezel here is nicely polished. This is just overall a very nicely done thing. And actually, that brings me to the next point, which is this dial. This dial is beautiful. Um, I really, really like the dial a lot for a bunch of different reasons. I mean, to start with, it is very, very simple. There is not a whole lot on here. There's not even a date function. Instead, what we see here are, well, the hour, the minutes, and the seconds with uh, all of those guys going around there. There's relatively little text. You get Tuda, Janelle, Rota self-winding. That's that's really all you need to know, right? Um, there is enough polish to the dial that you still get some reflectivity. You can pick up on a little bit of polishing. Uh, if you're in a low light situation, you'll be able to pick up where the hands are and such, as well as some of the indices, but it's not too crazy flashy. Um, and the blue on it is very, very subtle. In fact, in most circumstances, if I kind of lower the light a little bit by blocking out some of the external light, what you're going to see is the dial turns to something that feels much more black, right? At this point, the dial feels black, but if I give it a really strong burst of sun from the side here, it's going to get very, very blue. Right? And so this is a, and very, very dirty. <laughs> Anyways, this is a very, very strong uh, dial in that it is very subtle, but at the same time, it's quite good. Um, And this blue shifting colors, it's, I've just been loving it. I mean, it's also super duper legible. Uh, what I mean by that is this handset, the snowflake hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand are amazingly easy to read. Even in the middle of the night, there is no ambiguity as to what I'm looking at. It's very easy to find the hour. It's very easy to find the minute. And the second hand is pretty easy too, right? This is super legible, even late at night, all night long, and part of that is because the loom on this guy is awesome. I'm going to go on ahead and charge this off camera with a pretty powerful flashlight, and what you're going to see here is that the loom is beautiful. If I go ahead and cover it up, oh yeah, look at that quality loom right there. What we see here is that the hour, the minute, the second hand, as well as all of the indices are loomed, and we can also see that 12 o'clock is visible in loom alone, right? There's that triangle, which is different from any of the other indices, meaning that you will always be able to orient the watch even late at night. So this is just absolutely amazing. This is a very, very nice, if you are a person who wears a watch overnight so that you can roll over, look at your wrist, know what time it is, this is a great one for it because that loom is just not going to quit. It is really, really nice and super easy to read. So to me, all of that is the good. Is that it is awesome loom, a super legible handset. It is a nice dial. Lots of color variation in the blue here. Um, it has uh, great case finishing. 
Sapphire Crystal, 150 meters worth of water resistance. It is not an in-house movement, meaning it's going to be much easier to repair down the road if you not choose not to go with Tudor. Of course, Tudor is going to take care of you with an in-house movement, but still, it's nice not the. You know, it's nice to have the option. It is a uh, caliber T600, which is based on a very well-known workhorse movement, and it is a nice clasp and a uh, nice crown. So on the great side, for me, the size of this guy is absolutely great. There are too many modern watches that are too damn big. Here's an example of it. This is my Omega Seamaster Professional 300. This is a watch that I love very much, but I really wish was smaller. This is just a little bit big. It is very, very thick. It is very, very beefy. There is just not a whole lot of reason it needs to be quite this large. Um, I really feel like modern watches have gotten too damn big, and it's really nice to see Tudor remembering that, A, you can make a watch that is smaller than, oh, say, 38, 40 millimeters, and still marketed towards people of all different flavors, right? Um, and uh, 41 millimeters is their big size here. And I love the fact that you have the option to choose, right? Because the 41, I actually tried on recently. I, I, I ended up going to another store um, that happened to have Tudor, and I, I, I tried on the, the 41, and it was just like, Oh yeah, this is this is not the right size for me. And I tried on the 31 and that was not the right size either. This guy was perfect. And the fact that I can do something like this, where I not only get a watch that feels very, very good, and by the way, this is a great size, 36 millimeters. I, I'm really hoping that the modern watch world is going to shrink down a little bit more and go back towards these kind of classic sizes, because this feels very nice. It's super wearable, it's super light. It honestly makes a lot of other watches feel a little bit ridiculous on me at some level. Um, and so being able to choose the one that fit my wrist best, knowing that 41 might be a great choice for some, 31 might be a great choice for others, I absolutely love it. And the fact that they're willing to make all of the colorways, they're willing to do, well, okay, they're willing to do a lot of the same colorways across all of the dial sizes is great too, because it means that you don't have to worry about, oh, it's a men's watch, it's a women's watch. No, it's just a freaking watch. It doesn't matter how the heck you identify to wear a freaking watch. Just put on a watch, and if it looks good, you'll wear it, right? So I appreciate very much that they're giving you that option. They're giving you the set of three there, and that one of those is almost guaranteed to work well on your wrist, no matter the wrist size of it. So um, to me, what's great here is the size trio, both because you can choose the one is best for you, and because, damn, 36 is a great watch size, and I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for more in this kind of size. On the bad side, there are unfortunately some downsides here. One of them is that on the black model, I actually miss the bronze gilded accents, right? Um, The, the, the one I happened to try on, uh, actually after I bought this guy, was the black, and it was just like, oh yeah, huh. Because I really like on the Black Bay uh, 58, for instance, I like those little black accents there. They just make it look a little bit more attractive. That would have made the decision to go blue a little bit more difficult, but in this case, wasn't so hard. Um, I also dislike the fact that the lug width on this guy here is, we're going to go ahead and measure it out, and we're going to find that this guy is a 19 millimeter lug width. That's not good, right? Guys, why do you do this to us? Why? why? Who hurt you, Tudor? Um, there are many, many straps available at 18 millimeters, many straps available at 20 millimeters. 19? Really, guys? Really? Um, the next thing, the price on this guy is up there, 100%. This is a luxury brand. Tudor Watches, for better or for worse, is a luxury watch brand. And so $29.50 is your MSRP here. And of course, I would always shop around, see if you can get an MS, uh, I'm sorry, an AD to help you out a little bit, because that MSRP is high. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what you can do, even at Lewis, they might be able to help you. I really just don't know. But anyways, nonetheless, um, yeah, try and get a better deal on this than that. But the thing is, at some level, this also feels closer than many to earning that, right? The, the, the phrase I kind of kept coming back to is like, for a tutor, this is value, right? That's kind of like saying for a thunderstorm, that was pretty low-key, but still it is true. It, it is not actually value. It's a Swiss watch. Value is sort of out the window, but at the same time, it definitely feels better than a lot of what's out there. It feels like a much better deal than coming from a lot of the biggest Swiss brands, right? Is it better than, for instance, Euformix, uh, which is another Swiss brand, a Monta watch? Probably not. Those come in about a grand less and feel finished about the same, um, but at the same time, and I'll also say this is towards the top of the end of what you should be paying for a Solita or an ETA movement stock, right? Um, but the thing is, it also isn't so bad, right? In the grand scheme of things, they're not ripping my face off as badly. I would like to see them, though, do a little bit better. I'd like to see them maybe add in a little bit more in the bracelet. We'll talk about that later on. Maybe upgrade the movement or something like that, or just drop that price a little bit. But with a little help from an AD, I feel like you could land in territory that's going to feel just fine. So to me, 
The price is up there, but it's also not as offensive as some of the stuff I see on the channel. Um, next thing, there are definitely a couple of areas where the movement does feel a little bit behind the modern era, right? Um, for instance, one of the things is this doesn't come with any accuracy guarantee. Like I said, on the wrist, this is running plus two, plus three seconds a day overall. That's really good, but I'd like to see this give some kind of cr chronometer grading. I very firmly believe that you shouldn't pay more than about a grand for something that doesn't have a strong accuracy rating. And this is definitely a weakness. I'd also like to see more about the anti magnetism here. I'd like to see them kind of knock that down, because again, this is a thing that you need to deal with in mechanical watches in the modern era. And I also got to say, 38 hours as a power reserve? Not so great, right? So all of this feels okay at a lower price, but as you get to these higher price points, it starts to feel like a weakness, and this is one of those areas where the in-house movements tend to have better power reserves, tend to be anti-magnetic. Uh, Anti-magnetic, wow, as you hear me try and talk, right? Um, but nonetheless, yeah, that's an area of weakness. Next thing, um, I gotta say, this is an intensely, and actually last thing on the bat, this is an intensely reflective crystal on the watch. I mean, the watch itself is reflective, but if we take a look at this crystal here, yeah, what you see here is this is 100% reflecting anything and everything, including the I Am Nick Shabazz t-shirt, available at uh, nickshabazz.com slash merch. Anyways, this is a very reflective crystal. In practice, it's actually one of the things that contributes, I think, to the dial looking, you know, black in one sort of light and blue in another sort of light. But at the same time, I just don't care for it. This is, there's not an anti-reflective coating. Heck, there might be a pro-reflective coating on this guy. It's flat crystal problems, but at the same time, it's definitely a thing. This is a very reflective watch. And so to me, all of that is the bad, is that it is intensely reflective. There are a couple of areas where this movement is behind some of the competitors. Um, in terms of technical, the price is definitely up there, although a good AD could help you out. The lugs are 19 millimeters, and I do miss the black, uh, I'm sorry, the bronze accents on the black model. On the ugly front, um, there is one ugly issue with this watch, and that is the adjustability of the bracelet. Now, don't get me wrong. The bracelet is not as bad as some butterfly clasps in terms of adjust, right? But it is still very, very weak, all things considered. And in fact, if you look online, there is no shortage of forum posts by people who love this watch, as well as the Black Bay 58 and otherwise, but they can't quite get it to fit right. Um, for me, at least, on my wrist, which, by the way, is, uh, just to give you a sense, uh, right around a uh, 6.25 inch uh, uh, circumference wrist, this does fit okay, but it does have to wear a little bit loose for me, and I don't particularly love that. But there are a few reasons why this bracelet just isn't super adjustable. One of them is that the links on this guy are relatively long. The smallest adjustment you can make by reducing a, removing a link is about 10 millimeters, right? That's not uh, particularly small, right? The clasp itself is also quite long. Like, this portion of the clasp is pretty big, and so that's going to make it a little awkward on smaller wrists. You also get relatively few removable links. Right now, it looks like there's one more link that could be removed here, but the problem is that link is fixed to this area right here. So I actually could not remove an additional link on this side here, at least not to the best of my knowledge. And that's actually not great, especially for a watch that is meant to be a little bit smaller. I kind of want them to be able to adjust a little bit smaller still. So you have that, and then there are no half links, and there's less than a full link of tool uh, of quick adjustment, even if it requires a tool, right? I mean, you have a 10-millimeter link, and you have here much less than 10 millimeters worth of... Uh, yeah, take it out of the full 10, much less than that worth of actual adjustment. There, there's space for more, by the way. You could drill another hole here and another hole here, and you'd be fine. Like, I don't get it, Tuta. Did, why did you stop drilling? Do you just hate us? Um, but the thing is, this could be fixed. They could make this bracelet so that it fits any human beautifully in a bunch of different ways, right? Like, regardless, they should be selling half links, or th they should be including half links, but at the very least, they should be selling them. Links that are half the, uh, the length of this guy, because honestly, that just makes it so much easier to get a really nice, precise fit on a watch, and no matter what else you do with the adjust, you want to have both half links and adjust, because it gives you more flexibility. There is no excuse for not shipping half links on a watch this expensive, guys, that's just lazy. But you could also have drilled more quick adjust holes, and that would have made it a little bit easier to make sure it dials in for everybody. And in fact, I've seen people drilling those holes after market, which, okay, I guess, but still. Um, you could also do a toolless kind of quick adjust. Like, you know, here's a version from Omega. You press a little button, and then suddenly you get more bracelet length. You press that button again, and it shortens up again. Or here's, here's another one from Formex, which is a much less expensive watch. Oh, eh, look, look, 
Yeah, beautiful. See, and even Tuda has these, right? Um, the uh, Black Day Bronze now has them as well as the, the Pelagos has had it for years. Like, guys, that, that that's something, there are two kinds of people in the world, right? There are people who've had toolless quick adjusts, and there are people who don't know that they want a toolless quick adjust yet, right? It, it is a beautiful thing. Or even they could have done like a Rolex-style quick link where you get an extra little bit of extension uh, at any given moment without the use of a tool. That would have been great, too. There were a million different ways that they could have fixed it, but ultimately, the bracelet just isn't designed well to jump up and fit other people's wrists. Um, this is not particularly great. Mind you, if you are a person who likes a really floppy wear on the wrist, where it's like the watch is constantly bouncing around, in that case, by God, this isn't going to be a problem, right? You don't need more adjustment. But if you want your watch to fit you re reasonably tightly, to not move around as you move your arm, then by God, this is just really frustrating. Um, it is a 300, I'm sorry, it is a $3,000 watch that suffers from the same problems as like $700 watches have solved. Guys, come on. And especially when Tuda has these adjusts on other models, this just hurts. There were 10 ways they could have done this better, and they didn't. And so to me, they are way behind the times here, right? The, the, the watch has exactly two jobs. One is to keep good time, and the other is to wear well, right? It is a wrist watch. That's what it does. And unfortunately, they skimped on the wear well bit by being lazy with the bracelet. And that is, to me, very, very ugly. So the ugly thing here is that they just need to adjust the bracelet so that it can be adjusted a little bit better in one of 50 different possible ways. Um, final conclusion, though. Even despite that, even despite it being kind of a battle to get this exactly dialed in for me, it is a great little watch. Um, it's got a nice crown, a nice dial, a nice stem, a nice glass, but solid movement, which is not proprietary and easy to repair and service. It's got a good water resistance, sapphire crystal, great finishing, and awesome handset. I really do love the Snowflake hands. Um, it's got great loom and a selection of sizes that actually fit a bunch of different wrists, as well as skew the dinner plate on the wrist sort of look that's going on these days. Um, the lugs are 19 millimeters. The price is high. The movement is not keeping up with some of the higher end stuff. The crystal is going to do a lot more reflecting than your average philosopher, and the bracelet is just lacking in adjustability, even when we know Tuda can do better. But honestly, I like this watch a lot. This is really, really good. When I first saw this model, actually, um, I, I saw this guy from uh, Levon and the uh, Knife Knots podcast. He was posting his, and I was intrigued. And by the way, Levon, you're a jerk for showing me that. I, I, you're a lovely person, but you're a total jackass for showing me this guy. But nonetheless, I, I was really intrigued when I saw it, so I, 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 gave, I gave DK a call. Like, holy crap, they got a 36 inch, uh, 36 millimeter model. I am I am on it. Um, and so then when they loaned it out here and I got it on the wrist, well, I turned out to be on the phone to him again, right? Because it's good. It's really good. It is a very simple watch. It's clean. It's legible. Straightforward movement. And it is done, with the exception of the bracelet issue, pretty exceptionally. They've done a lot of really good work here. Um, I, so I feel like this ends up feeling very exceptional because of the size here. And I think it's an interesting commentary on our current luxury watch world that something being small, light, wearable, and simple kind of stands out, right? Right now, big and gouty is kind of the thing. I, and I, I'm a guy who likes some of that, right? But this is subtle and it's simple and I do really appreciate that. And honestly, I think still the best thing about this is that option. No matter your wrist, no matter your style, no matter what kind of watches you like to wear or not, I think there's one of these that's going to work well for you. And you're not being forced into different styles or colors or models just because you want something smaller here. To me, the most interesting competitor is actually the Rolex Explorer 1. Um, when they announced that the new Explorer in, I think this was 2020, would go down to 36 millimeter, I suddenly became very interested in that model again. And I've said many times that I wanted one and that, you know, in a lot of ways, making it smaller made it even more. But the thing is, sure, I'd still take one. If you want to send me one, I'll give you my P.O. box, right? But the thing is, this scratches the same itch in a lot of ways. I mean, don't get me wrong. The movement, the bracelet are much less engineered than the original. You're also losing chronometer grading. You're losing the anti-magnetism. You're losing the 80-hour power reserve, which, that's pretty serious. And you're losing the quick link, which, come on, Duda. <laughs> Duda and Rolex, you're the same company. You can do better, right? And yeah, of course, you get different styling and such. But the thing is, this is less than half the price. At some level, you are definitely still paying for the brand. Tudor is a high-end brand, but you're not paying nearly as much for the brand as with Rolex. You're also getting a movement that's going to be easier to service, with easily available parts for any watchmaker. You're getting a more minimal dial, you're getting a bit more water resistance, not that it super matters at this level, and you can actually, you know, 
walk into a dealer that isn't the gray market and buy one. And that's kind of a nice thing. So I feel like if you've been looking at the Explorer, this is actually worth exploring uh, as an alternative. But anyways, uh, ultimately, um, this guy was sent to me by Lewis Jewelers as a loan. But as I said, this is three weeks later. So that means that once again, Lewis Jewelers has succeeded in saving money on the return shipment. Do not get in to watches. And I really fell in love, though, with the size and with the dial on this guy. It's, it's just really great and decided I wanted to keep this guy around. This really does just wear better on my wrist than a lot of watches out there in the world. And it's going to be a really hard sell to put me back in 42, 43 millimeters. Again, this is, this is just great. I really like it. As for gem status, um, I gotta be honest with you, I am right on the edge of that. If they had done the bracelet adjustment as well as they had done the rest of the watch, 100%, I would be shouting about this watch from the rooftops. And it is hard for me to recommend a watch that might not be able to fit your wrist super well. You'd be having a hack it. I gotta be honest, even with me, I've had to do a lot of work. I've had to, you know, swap these guys, swap links back and forth, keep trying. And, you know, I know that, you know, if I gain some weight, lose some weight, this guy might end up being a little bit tricky for me. But at the at the same time, for me, once I did get everything in adjustment, this is a gem. Subjectively, I like it a lot. The size, the legibility, the dial, everything on it just makes this great, and it's been spending a lot of time on my wrist. I do love it. Um, and it's just the loom too. Oh man, it just it's good. It's really, really good. And so my final conclusion here is that this is a very, very nice little watch. It's at a range of sizes that I think will work very well for a lot of people. It's got a minimal, readable, and attractive face. And although I think there is definitely room to improve. Do better with the bracelets, Toda. What is already here could very easily be your Black Bay. With a BAE? Uh, uh, okay. You could choose among the two to three options that would best fit your choices for the wrist size. Uh, uh, okay. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you that this review wasn't too flaky. Snowflake hand? Uh, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.